in our papers. Day after day, all we are seeing is attacks on the government of Venezuela, the demonising of Hugo Chavez. Where do you ever read any of the truth about what happened after Chavez came to power? I just checked back before I came today. He came to power in a country which had been dominated by 200 super-rich families for generations. It didn't matter who won the, the election, those families controlled the politicians. Not too dissimilar from the banking system here in the West um, these days. But when Chavez came to power, he actually introduced free health care. Never read about that in the press. He ended illiteracy. Yep. which had been endemic throughout Venezuela, and he introduced affordable medicines and food. A quarter of a million Venezuelans were blind because they had cataracts. All of them had their sight restored without having to pay a penny. Yeah. Yeah. But he didn't just look after his own people. He gave nine billion pounds to other Latin American countries struggling with poverty. And when he came here to London in 2007, which wasn't guaranteed because Tony Blair had ordered the police not to provide protection for him in the hope that he wouldn't come. And fortunately, as mayor, I had some say over the bloody police, like I appointed the commissioner. <laughs> And I made certain that was reversed and we did provide protection. So Chavez was quite friendly when he turned up. But the legacy of his visit is the fact that he gave City Hall £14 million so that we could cut the fares by 50% for people on benefits. That was bloody wonderful. And it was Maduro was the minister responsible for negotiating and dealing with me and my staff to actually deliver that. I have not seen a single one of these things mentioned anywhere in our media in the months and months of hostility that we're seeing. But I think also we need to look at the current situation. We're told Venezuela's economy is in a mess because Maduro is no good as a president. There's two key factors that have damaged the Venezuelan economy. One is the collapse of oil prices, and don't forget, Venezuela has the largest oil reserves of any nation on the face of the planet. It's bound to have a huge impact. But then you have to ask, what has the American government been doing to undermine their economy with illegal sanctions? And it's not just Venezuela. America's sanctions against Iran, Nicaragua, all of these are illegal under international law. So why don't our government stand up to them? They are absolutely bloody appalling. But the simple fact is that when he came to power, he increased the taxes on the oil companies, BP, Shell and Exxon. He raised the taxes from 16% to 30%. Hardly revolutionary. I mean... Not like the good old days of the Attlee government where the richest were paying 98% bloody tax. But immediately we had the situation where the Assistant Secretary of State of the USA, Otto Reich, had a secret meeting with Venezuelan billionaires. And in the weeks that followed, you had, it's 2002, the military coup that actually looked as though it was going to overturn everything Chavez had done. But the interesting thing about that is the military were worried the coup might not stand and it might be overturned. And so they didn't kill Chavez. But what happened? Three Americans, presumably from the CIA, were flown into Venezuela to kill Chavez. I know this because he told me about it personally as we were having a nice cup of coffee after our financial deal. And he was confined to a room where an army sergeant who was armed was controlling him, in charge. As the three Americans walked into that room, 
that sergeant realised they weren't just going to kill Chavez. They'd most probably kill him because they didn't want a witness to this assassination. And so he turned his gun towards the three and said, leave the room or I'm going to kill you. Without that sergeant, Chavez would have been murdered by America. And don't believe for one minute this was just rogue elements. I'm certain that was authorised by President Bush at that time. And it's not new. Eight American presidents authorised the murder of Fidel Castro. Yeah. And bizarrely, the CIA actually were liaising with the Mafia to help organise those assassinations. I could go on all day just working my way through the 60 instances since the end of the Second World War where America's intervened to overthrow governments it didn't like. And America talks about we're fighting for democracy. No, almost all of them, democratically elected governments, like Iran in 1953, overthrown by an American-backed coup. Haiti. I mean, and Haiti. Haiti, and all across the world this has gone on. It's never been about democracy. It's been about America being able to continue to rip off the economy of the world it's giant corporations making hundreds of billions whilst around the world people live trapped in poverty. That's what Chavez and Maduro are fighting for. That's why we should stand with them. And that's why the British government should do nothing to comply with America's sanctions. And no Bank of England should be doing anything to undermine the Venezuelan economy. Shame on our bloody bank. Thank you. Shame on us.